All right, what do you say we head out to the coast? We check on Eric Von Anken. He has been uh, in the eye of this storm. He has seen the eye wall, and I understand he's been seeing some pretty wild stuff. Eric, are some transformers blowing up around you? Uh, hey, Matt. Yeah, Lisa, um, so the last thing you guys said to me, I think it was might have been Ginger about 40 minutes ago, was enjoy it while you can. Because the eye wall has clearly passed and we are now on the back side of this hurricane and yes uh, lots of transformers blowing Matt here over downtown Sarasota so in between these gusts what we're seeing is the the skyline uh, go darker starting from uh, the south end of Sarasota so you see this what looks like fireworks Lost my hat here. Jeff, did you did you catch that? So in the sky, it looked like maybe, I don't know, uh, five, five or so transformers blowing all at the same time in the distance there. Uh, it is possible that was lightning, except that um, it was all in the same spot. And we haven't seen lightning uh, in the last several hours here. So very likely those are transformers, because what's happening now is the the wind has shifted direction, right? So, uh, you know, I mean, that's how hurricanes work. Now that the eye wall has passed us, we're getting, we're getting. What's that, Jeff? Oh, hold on, we got some interference here. <laughs> we got another crew here. So, now that we're on the back side of the storm, the other side of the wind is coming at us, and it's coming from the other direction. So. <laughs> What hasn't gotten nailed by the wind is now getting nailed by the wind. Um, you know, the, the way these structures are set up, the way that the wind was blowing initially, obviously protected some of them depending on where they were, including many of the transformers. And now the transformers, obviously, that were vulnerable that are not being uh, protected by by the buildings and the other infrastructure because the wind has switched 180 degrees. Um, they are vulnerable and now they are exploding because typically that's what happens when uh, wind, wind like this blows this hard, um, either knocking them off, uh, blowing them apart. Uh, you know, it just takes an electrical short and that's why the, uh, the sky lights up. There are chemicals inside those transformers that cause the different colors to look almost like a like a rainbow. Um, here in downtown Sarasota, remember we talked earlier about um, projected storm surge. So projections were upwards of 13, 14 feet, uh, even 15 feet, depending on who you talk to. And before the eye wall moved over Sarasota County, Siesta Key specifically, from what I'm hearing, which is straight that way, just about a mile or so, before the eye wall came in, we had not seen a noticeable change in the height of the water here. And Candace said that based on what you've seen so far, it's, it's not likely that you're going to get that kind of storm surge where you are um, as this storm continues to pass through. But I can tell you what is different is the water is definitely starting, definitely starting to come up higher than it was. Because remember, for the, for the last six, eight hours, there has been no change. Now, got to be fair, you got to factor in the tides, right? So we're heading towards... What is it? Nine. Tough to see my watch. I think it's 9.30-ish. So we're heading towards high tide, which is right around 3 a.m.-ish here. I want to say right around 3.30 in the morning. So naturally, the tide is coming in. And naturally, as, as the wind is blowing and this hurricane continues to blow through here, it will raise the water level. The question is how much of it is high tide or higher tide as the tide comes in. And the question is how much is from Hurricane Milton? And obviously we don't know the answer to that yet, but you heard from Candace a little while ago. She was feeling fairly good that at least this area, if you have interest here, if you have a, a second home or a condo or you got family or friends here, she felt fairly confident 
that this spot would not be seeing the storm surge that they were predicting. But still, Jeff, can you, I can't even see you, Jeff. Can you show the, uh, the dock right in front of you? Because even just in the last four or five minutes since I started talking with you guys, this has changed. The dock that I'm standing on here has risen and the water here in the bay is starting to overtake the sidewalk just a little bit. And again, the wind blowing this direction now is, like I said, it was uh, uh, spun 180 degrees, but it's the Gulf that's this direction. So, you know, straight out west from where I'm standing. And as I was explaining earlier, so what's unique about Sarasota is one of the inlets, one of the channels that goes straight out to the Gulf is directly uh, west of me, so directly in front of me. So the ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, has open access to where we're standing right here in Sarasota Bay. And that's what happened about two weeks ago with Hurricane Helene when that storm washed in because coming in from the Gulf, it did push first into the Barrier Islands, and then even here, which surprised a lot of people, into downtown Sarasota on the Bayfront. Um, there's a whole park here that's that's right there. Of course, you can't see it right now. But, but this is really a beautiful area, or was a beautiful area, before Hurricane Helene came through. And it didn't, it didn't soak downtown Sarasota, the Bayfront here, but it did come over the roadway and wrecked a lot of the concrete and so, uh, there were obviously some uh, pretty powerful waves coming in from that last storm and it washed i told you this washed a bunch of boats up onto the shore and up onto the island at uh, the bayfront park right next to me so i think that was the first taste of what a very powerful storm could do here on the Gulf Coast, at least Southwest Florida, in a long, long time, and for a lot of people, you know, we talked, we interviewed so many people over the last uh, what have we been here three days now, who were brand new. I mean, Jeff, we were at uh, the Wawa last night trying to trying to fight to get a, uh, our our own pump to, to fill up our uh, our news truck, our live truck, um, and then we went inside, and a guy comes up to us and he says, "We just moved here from." I don't, I don't remember, I want to say somewhere in the Midwest, but he says, we just got here, what do we do, where do we go? And this was last night, so we said, well, you know, at this point, uh, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit late. Hopefully, you know, your house is okay, or you've taken care of your house, but, but go inland, you know, go to, go to Central Florida. I mean, uh, it, it is, th this is something that hasn't, this path, as we were talking about, is something that hasn't happened to Southwest Florida in some 100 years or so. And so many folks have moved here to Sarasota. I mean, I lived here in 2000. You know, I just lived here for a few years, but so many people since then have moved in. I remember when, at the time I was living here, you know, Florida and Southwest Florida was growing like crazy, and it has continued to do so. So this is a, a, a new experience for so many people. And we know the same thing in Central Florida, right? I mean, how fast is, is Orlando growing? Something like a thousand, you know, the figure we keep hearing is something like a thousand people a week moving to Central Florida from all over the country. So the warnings that we keep hearing about, you know, these, the concern is that people might not take them seriously. And the people who have been here through some of these storms who got lucky and were able to ride them out might be influencing some of the new folks. But but, you know, our emergency managers have been, as you've heard, you know, you've heard the sound bites from the governor, you heard the sound, sound bite from the mayor of Tampa. Some of these officials have been terrified that if we don't take this one seriously, there is going to be major loss of life because of the power of this storm, the winds, how quickly it grew, how much it intensified, and what it was supposed to do when it made landfall here again in Siesta Key, which is, like I said, just a mile um, from where we are. We were on Siesta Key, remember yesterday, reporting live from that resort that just got pummeled with sand. So, you know, what is happening so far? Well, I, I, you know, I already got a bunch of calls. I know people want to know, how is Sarasota? And the answer is, it, it ain't over yet. You know, during the during that calm, uh, as the eye wall passed over us, we had hope uh, that, that this particular area was going to do better than some of the projections and some of the predictions. Um, you know, 
this is now the second half of the storm. So all we can do is hang out <laughs> and hang on, literally. Um, Matt and Lisa, and, and see what this brings us as this now heads toward you guys in Central Florida. All right, Eric. Yeah, 